This is a cat. You know that. Everyone watching this video knows that. Even a toddler will point to this photo and call it a cat. Well, not necessarily. Sometimes children mix up cats and dogs, especially if they weren't exposed to different breeds or colors or sizes of animals before. But as soon as they've seen enough cats and dogs and other furry friends, they've learned the difference. We apply similar logic when helping machines understand the visual world. This technology helps autonomous vehicles avoid pedestrians and other cars, as well as react to road signs. And that's how computer models can locate tumors in MRI images with up to 90% accuracy. The image recognition skill allows computers to process more information than the human eye, often faster and more accurately, or simply when people are not involved in looking. So, how can machines see and interpret the visual world? Well, let's talk about computer vision and its applications. In the first three years of our lives, we create one million neural connections per second. Whenever we learn something new, a neuron in our brain lights up with an electrical impulse and sends the message about a new experience to other neurons, forming connections. Everything we know is shaped by these neural connections, networks of them. Whenever we see a new type of cat, the same connection strengthens, making it easier for us to recognize an animal as a cat next time. With machines, we use similar neural networks, but those networks are artificial. Just a disclaimer, we will be using simplified explanations and formulas to make concepts more digestible. An artificial neural network is an advanced machine learning algorithm that can answer questions without any hints from humans. Questions like, how much will it cost to fix a car or a roof after the disaster? Tractable uses AI to study the photos taken by insurance clients to evaluate how much should be reimbursed. And in this demo, NVIDIA applies image recognition to satellite imagery to detect destruction of homes in the Woolsey Fire in 2018. The neural network looks for specific features that it knows must represent damage, and it does so by doing math. A neural net consists of many layers. An input layer that receives the data, the output layer that makes the final forecast, and the hidden layers, where the magic happens. Layers consist of nodes, neurons, that are all interconnected. Each neuron is performing a computation. Just like biological neurons receive signals about the world, artificial ones receive data. The difference? It's represented in a format understood by computers, numbers. For images, it's the color values of the pixels composing the image. Neurons in the input layer are not that important because they simply receive data and pass it on. So let's focus on this node in one of the hidden layers. Connected to many nodes in the previous layer, it accepts one number from each node, but it doesn't treat all these connections equally. They have different importance, or weights, also represented as numbers. The higher the weight, the more influence one node has on another. So a node multiplies inputs by their corresponding weights and then adds them all up to create a single number. This number will become an input for the nodes in the next layer. So, the weights basically help the net look for the data that carries the greatest importance for the task and, layer upon layer, recognize more of the details until the last node puts it all together and says, here are all the areas hit by hail. Yes, an experienced evaluator can also do this kind of job manually, but they will have to travel to the affected zone and inspect large areas, immensely extending the claim processing time but a computer can analyze data from photos without workers moving around and wasting precious time. Of course, it doesn't have to be just static images. Amazon incorporated neural networks to develop one of its most groundbreaking products, Amazon Go Stores. Every part of their unique just walk out experience is run by computer vision. Cameras and sensors keep track of every person entering the store and what they're doing whether picking up an item or returning it to the shelf. At the same time, every product sold at the store is tracked by cameras too. Is it on the shelf or in someone's hand? And finally, those two instances are combined to answer the ultimate question. Which person took what product? 
With almost 30 locations in the US and now a shop in London, the automated stores are no longer a concept but the retail reality, as Amazon starts providing the technology to Whole Foods, Tesco, and Starbucks. This way, computer vision is transforming the way offline shopping works. Any visual data that can provide useful information can be processed by machines, saving time, money, and providing competitive advantage. This was the basic principle that all neural nets work by, but they can be different too. For image recognition tasks, convolutional neural networks are used the most. They were specifically created to work with two-dimensional image data and are extremely good at locating important features of objects. Here's how convolutional neural networks work. Computers see images as grids of pixels. As you may know, each pixel is represented and encoded as a combination of red, green, and blue of different intensity. Here's what a computer sees when you input this picture. Let's switch it to grayscale and reduce the resolution for simplicity. From this color intensity map alone, the computer must determine how many cars are parked in the parking lot. This information can be used to optimize price or redirect traffic to less populated areas. This will get a bit math heavy, so be prepared. In a convolutional neural network, we do almost the same thing the normal neural network does, but instead of multiplying one pixel value by its weight, we multiply a patch of pixels by a set of weights called a filter or a kernel. This is done because, in images, the difference between neighboring pixel values is important. Pixels with low values are darker, while high values are lighter. If the contrasting pixels are located close together, it's a good indication that we're looking at an object's outline. So, we multiply this patch of pixels by the filter and receive one pixel. The filter moves across the image patch by patch until it transforms the whole picture, so the convolutional neural net not only extracts value from the image, but also reduces its dimension, making it easier to process. Depending on what features we want the machine to find, we apply a specific filter. They're like templates helping bring out needed features. This one can pinpoint the outlines. Other kernels can filter out horizontal or vertical lines. There are kernels for finding faces and separate face features. Okay, but how does a computer know which weights to multiply by? We're glad you're catching on, because this is kind of a crucial part. Neural networks learn those weights during the training process. Want to know how to train a deep learning model? Let's start with something familiar. How do humans see? Well, to be honest, we don't know for sure how our brains apply meaning to the visuals around us. The most popular theory is pattern recognition. It states that we rely on patterns, or features, to figure out what objects we're seeing. A cat has its set of characteristics, a long tail, fur, and big pointy ears to start with. But we don't teach our children about cats by listing all those characteristics to them. We show them pictures because it's easier and allows for much more flexibility. This and this are both cats, even though they're different in many ways. But a child is capable of catching all the things, features, that are common in them. So we do the same thing with machines. We show them pictures, tell them what's in them, and hope they figure out all the important features by themselves. Say you want to build an app that will calculate the probability of pneumonia from X-ray images, similar to the one we prototype for decision-making in the hospital setting. As we already established, you can't simply tell the computer what disease looks like on a radiograph. Moreover, you want to distinguish between different conditions. So the best approach is to give the computer a vast amount of labeled chest x-rays to extract valuable features on its own. This is one of over 112,000 training images we use for our pneumonia scenario. Its pixel map is fed to the input layer, which performs convolution. Except this time, all filter values are random, completely incidental. The results are passed to outgoing layers, where they're multiplied and added many times before arriving at the output layer. There, the resulting output is compared to the desired one. In case of an error, the system starts tweaking weights over and over until it gives a correct result. The process of training is basically finding appropriate weights from the constant feedback loop. This video might not look like much, but here, an aerospace manufacturer, Airbus, is making aviation history. 
In this demonstration, they present a new autonomous technology that will soon assist pilots of commercial flights in taxiing, takeoffs, and landings. Notice the pilot nervously hovering a hand over the stick while the aircraft soars into the sky on its own accord? Airbus uses cameras, sensors, and software powered by computer vision to let the jet navigate the runway independently and take off at the appropriate time. In harsh weather conditions, pilots will have to manually correct the plane, but in ideal circumstances like this, they can delegate such operations to the computer and get busy with navigational tasks and communication. On the ground, the transformation promises to be even more drastic. Currently, over 6,000 pedestrians die in traffic accidents every year in the U.S., a number that increased by almost 50% since 2010. Over 90% of collisions happen due to drivers getting distracted. But if we remove human error from the equation, we can significantly improve road safety. In the first quarter of 2021, Tesla vehicles operating with autopilot became engaged in a single road accident for every 4.19 million miles driven. In the same period, Tesla cars not using autopilot experienced one accident for every 978,000 miles traveled. So, it seems like self-driving Tesla cars can be four times safer than the ones operated by a regular human driver. Even though people are wary of autonomous cars, stats speak for themselves. Tireless and watchful, autopilots are projected to make roads safer and more walkable as we inevitably move towards the autonomous future. One of the most popular uses of computer vision is facial recognition. The unique architecture of our faces allows machines to perform fantastically accurate face matching to validate our identity or find missing persons. Since the launch of their facial recognition system in 2016, Interpol identified almost 1,500 terrorists, criminals, persons of interest, and missing people. These applications are our triumph in a decades-long effort to make computers see the same way we do. That said, it's not always that positive. It's one thing when technology tracks humans on the road, but a completely different one when it recognizes their identities, logs details about their personal lives, or classifies marginalized groups to mistreat them. Deepfakes can be entertaining in one context while harmful and destructive in others. Shockingly accurate face search engines are available both to those who want to stop misuse of their pictures and to those who want to stalk other people. This is a common dilemma that almost every technology becomes subject to. Should we stall the progress to protect our privacy? It seems that computer vision has advanced too far and promises too many benefits to have us ever choose to stop progress in its tracks. Our job here is to provide regulations and rules to make sure that progress and ethics go hand in hand.